Hi everyone, welcome to the real-time tutorial of the pastel drawing I uploaded one week ago, one and a half weeks ago. So uh, a lot of you wanted the real-time version on YouTube as well. So that's what you're going to watch right now. I'll do a voiceover to explain what I'm doing. And um, you're free to follow along or add to the drawing or change things uh, you're free to do that and if you've drawn along feel free to tag me on instagram okay so for materials i'm using pastel mat about um, seven by nine inches and then i'm using this plant pot this plastic thing just to trace the outline of the planet then I'm using Faber Castell Pastels, the 48 set, and some Sabilo pencils. Okay, so I'm starting out with the background. So I'm going from background to foreground, starting at the top and working my way towards the bottom. Oh, and I've taped down the edges, as you can see, I'm using masking tape. It's not a specific brand. So I'm starting out with this teal color. Unfortunately, these pastels don't really have names or numbers, as far as I know. So I'll just describe the colors. And if you have any other pastels by another brand, just choose um, colors that look close to the ones I'm using, but you don't need the exact same brands. So I'm starting with this steel color. Uh, for the sky, I am looking at the reference from Pixabay that I found, but I'm not completely copying it. I'm just using it as inspiration. So the background is going to be a combination of blue and some purple and pink so i'm starting with the blue at the top i'm mixing in the teal with this darker blue color as you can see as i don't want too much teal in the um, sky i'm working in horizontal motions as i want a cons consistent blend and you don't really see vertical lines or vertical strokes in skies anyway so I keep my strokes horizontal to get the most realistic effect and I'm also keeping the pastels rather diagonal so I can cover a larger area at one time so when you're using just the tip of it it will take longer to fill up an area taking this very dark blue now and I'm going to go below the teal and lighter blue I'm drawing carefully around the planet or moon I think it's a moon so I'm not I'm not worrying about blending yet, I just want to lay in all the different colors. My pressure is between light and medium I would say, so I'm not pressing super hard, so uh, I can still add more colors on top later on, but my pressure is not super light either. I found that this dark blue was a little bit too dark I'm going on top with the lighter blue when it comes to paper I would recommend pastel matte because it's really good for pastels 
but if you don't have this you can also use UART or um, velour paper even if you have that or can sun me tents if you have that but I like that one a little less I would recommend to use uh, another color than white so some sort of brown or gray tint white is it can be difficult to work on especially when you have to work with white tones so the moon is going to be rather light and that will be quite difficult to do if you're working on white paper it might not stand out well I just find a medium tone uh, much easier when it comes to judging colors taking a dark purple now I'm going below the dark blue and then the very bottom of the sky at the horizon I want to be very bright pink so I'm picking this medium toned pink very bright I really like these pastels, they are a lot brighter I feel than the Koinor pastels that I've also been using for the past years. And I'm laying down that one below the purple. I'm leaving open the area below the pink because that's where the black hill is going to be now it's time to define the colors a bit better and start the blending process so I'm taking the dark purple again, I'm going a little bit on top of the pink just to already create a nice transition I already have the shape of the hill in mind, so I'm trying to adjust the pink accordingly. Then it's time for some blending. So I pick my ring finger, make sure that your hands are clean. I'm going to blend the pink in circular motions. And I'm going over the edge onto the purple and then onto the blue. I'm going to carefully blend the colors together. I'm using circular motions because it gives the most even blend. I want the very top of the sky to have a little bit more of a cloudy look so you can see that it's still not very even when it comes to the blending and I actually want that. Now very careful when coming back to the pink again. And then the first layer of blending is done. So now I'm going back to the pastels. Uh, the pink got lost a little bit, so 
I'm just putting in second layer on top. Create some more value in there. Then make sure your fingers are clean again. So in the meantime, in the meantime, I uh, I washed my hands and I have a damp cloth next to me just to wipe off my fingers in between layers. I don't want any of the blue in in the pink. That's going to create muddy colors. So I carefully blend that again. I figured that the pink was a little bit too bright so I'm going over with a little bit of blue on my finger and I'm going on top of the pink just to darken that up a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to create some detail in the sky. So I want to create some cloudy forms, shapes, get that galaxy look in there. So I'm taking the teal color that I started with and create some patches on there, which I'm going to blend in that will create a cloudy look. Taking my pointer finger right now so another finger because my ring finger already has pink on it so I try to use a clean finger every time and then when all of them are dirty I wipe them off taking a nice light purple tone to create some cloudy looking shapes on the dark blue area of this of the sky And then I'm blending that in again. So this time I'm not pushing so much when I blend because that's going to fade out all the details. So I'm just carefully tapping in the color into the paper. taking a very light blue, the lightest blue from the set, and I'm creating some even lighter clouds. You can see that I'm being quite random with the shapes there, 
so I don't want to get um, that much consistency in it so I want the shapes all to look random if they all look the same it will look very very stiff and unnatural tapping those in again some more refining so you can basically spend as much time on this as you want with pastels you can get a result quite quickly and the amount of detail you get depends on how much time you spend on it. I only spent one hour on this one so I could have made it a lot more detailed but for this one I just um, I just wanted to create a loose and colorful looking drawing. putting a little bit of that light purple on top of the, on top of the pink just to tone it down a little bit I still I still found that pink too bright compared to the rest of the sky I lost some of the darkness in the sky so um, one this time I'm going back in with the darkest blue and add some darkness all right then to start the moon um, the lines 
or not as tight anymore, so I decided to go over once again with the plants pot. And this time I'm choosing this minty color from the Stabilo Carbothello line to trace the outlines. taking white. Uh, this one is from Faber-Castell Pitts. I find that one to be a little more opaque than the white from Sabilo, so I'm using that one. I'm using that just at the top of the moon because I want um, the light source to be there, like um, in the top right. Then I'm filling in the moon, so for that I'm using the lightest blue pastel as a base tone. Then I'm going to add a lot of darker, darker tones as well. So I'm just quickly filling that in. careful around the edges As you can see I left open a tiny area between the outline of the moon and the base stone because I want to fill in that tiny area with pencils because I can be a little bit more secure and detailed with them. Taking this bright blue now from Sibilo, adding some of that to the bottom left corner of the moon. Um, the light is going to come from the top right which means that the bottom left is going to be the darkest. Then with this lighter blue, I'm going to fill in the edges. A bit more coverage with the light blue tone and you can get quite detailed with these pastels as they are a rectangle shaped so they have quite sharp edges to them which you can use to put in some detail but still the pencils are easier to use for very detailed work I 
I decided that I wanted the moon to be a lot darker so I'm taking this purple, putting down some purple and then some very dark blue on top. It's not entirely blue, it's more of a mix between teal and blue. And then blending that in. As you can see the blending is not very even because the base layers weren't very thick yet so I can still add a lot of layers on top and then get the blending a little bit more even um, it doesn't need to be completely even though because I like there to be some texture being very careful again around the edges So now I'm going to focus on making the edges a bit more tight. Using the white pencil again, just along the edges. And then the white pastel, which is a lot more opaque than the white pencil, for some highlight. I wanted to do that on the top right.
and now I'm going to put some textures on the moon so with the lightest blue again I'm going on top of the darker tone and create some cloudy shapes on the moon and I'm just experimenting a bit here it doesn't need to look very realistic so I'm just being free and trying out different things Alright, and then when I'm with a very dark purple tone, I'm going to darken up the shadow on the planet some more. So I've already put down quite a lot of layers there, so then it's not so easy anymore to go on top of it with the pencil. But I don't need a lot of coverage. So I'm just lightly going on top to darken up the, the tone. Just a little bit more. And then blending that in again. wanted to highlight the top right corner even more so I'm going on top again with the white pastel Using a clean finger to tap that in. Adding a little bit of extra color with a light minty tone. some more cloudy shapes with the white pastel right now I'm not really blending anymore as you can see I'm just tapping the paper 
to smooth out the lines, but I don't want to fade, fade out the details completely. Alright, so I was still not completely happy with the outlines of the moon, so I went over again with the plastic cup. Um, if your outlines are already pretty tight, you don't need to do this again, but I just wanted to do it as I wasn't completely happy with what um, the outlines looked like. Sorry for my hair getting in the way now and then. So I'm tightening up the lines even more with the white pencil. highlight with the white pastel and I just keep working on it until I'm happy with what it looks like So then it's time to move on to the heel, doing that with the black pastel and in one smooth motion I'm drawing the heel. I decided to not just draw a flat straight line because that could look quite um, flat. So to make it a little more interesting I decided to make it a heel. And then I'm drawing the bunnies on top. So for this I had some references in front of me of bunnies to see what their silhouettes look like. I'm starting with the ears. I'm making them rather small to make it seem like they are quite far in the back towards the horizon. And I'm drawing the bunnies first. Um, compared to filling in the whole hill area. I'm drawing the bunnies first because then I can rest my hands on the paper without getting black on my hand. So I'm starting with ear one. second ear make sure to use quite sharp of a pencil for that otherwise you can't get the lines very tight especially because there are so many layers underneath it already so then it becomes extra hard to get the black to show up really well Taking it slowly, 
and then I'm drawing the head and the body downwards. So it takes a little practice to know where you should start in order to fit in the whole body. And you can also start with the bottom of the body of course and then work your way upwards. Um, that depends on how you like to work. So it's quite important to get these silhouettes to look quite realistic or at least to get the anatomy of the bunnies right. And that gives the drawing that extra bit of realism. And then I've decided to fill in the silhouettes with the black pastel as it is a lot more opaque and it's a lot more easy to cover the paper with all those layers underneath. So I'm using a sharp edge of the pastel trying to fill in the silhouette as tidy as possible. And then on to the second one, doing that one in the same way. This one I wanted to give a little bit of a different body shape. This bunny is going to be a little thinner. And of course because they're so far away you won't be able to see a lot of detail on them. You won't be able to see the hairs or the paws. So I keep them very stylized.
So I wanted to make it look like the left bunny is looking a bit towards the right and the right bunny is um, all from, from the back. So you're looking at its back and with the left bunny you're looking at like the right side of the, of the body a bit more. So I wanted to give them different positions otherwise it might be a bit boring to look at. So by creating these slight differences in their positions, um, it gives a more realistic and lively effect to the drawing. And of course you can add or change anything you like, so you can add trees if you want to, or draw another animal that's all up to you. And then of course it's time to fill in the hill, and I'm doing that just with black, filling in the whole area, using horizontal motions. And then of course a rabbit hill needs some grass. I just I didn't want to leave it um, as tight as it is right now, so I'm drawing in some grass with the pastel chalk using a sharp edge of the pastel. I'm not drawing too much grass, just some to break the line, but as I said you can add anything to this um, basically. Finally, I'll draw some stars in the sky 
that always gives an extra magical effect to the drawing so I'm using the white pastel for that and with a sharp corner of it I'm tapping the paper and creating stars that way so I'm all drawing them in manually and individually so for this it's important to not draw them all um, equal sizes or with equal distances bet between each other draw them in clusters leave some spaces a bit more empty so it's important to create variety there Alright, so a few more stars and then the drawing is basically finished. So I'll insert a finished picture of the drawing and if you've followed along, um, please tag me on Instagram or Facebook and I'd love to share your results in my stories and um, let me know in the comments what you think of this video if you want to see more real-time narrated videos like this. You can find a whole lot of them on, on uh, Patreon, by the way. So that is it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.